uh, 372 pages. We'll never get back. I'm Michael J. Nelson. On my screen, I'm at the bottom. Where? How does it work for you, Connor? Side Wait. by side, baby. Side by side. Great song. Great arrangement of video screens. Um, <laughs> oh, but people aren't listening. On, they're, not everyone's on video. I'm so not sorry. Not everyone is, but I'm, the privileged few are on video. So I apologize for that. Anyway, if you're listening on, <laughs> imagine us either side by side or atop one another. However, it's you one like of those things. Do how do people how do people imagine us when they are doing this? Do they think that we're side by side? Is it? Uh, do they think that we're in the same room? Are there some people out there that think that? I don't know. Some yeah. of you people who. Had us as your top podcast and Spotify wrapped must have given this some thought. Yeah. And I think there's that, I think I've mentioned that before the, you know, you listen to some, like a podcast for years and then you finally see the person who's. Oh God. Awful. Oh, I had a completely different, even though you don't really have any physical thing in mind. It's like, that is not at all what I pictured. I right. If you I were, wasn't actually picturing anything, but that's <laughs> not that. If you were asked to police sketch your favorite podcast listener. <laughs> yes. uh, uh, what are we here to do? We're here to pick our next book. It's the yeah. it's the cozy season. Um, you know, the, the, the clock becomes December. The calendar becomes December. It flips that page. You start wearing your fuzziest slippers and uh, your 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 fleeciest throw and uh, yogurt off the back of the spoon um, as you, <laughs> the the hallmarks of any coziness. Your your cup of cocoa. Oh, um, slipping hallmark in there is wow. That's just yeah. great. And so we've got a we've got a pick. A, one of these cozy mysteries to read, a Christmas-themed cozy mystery, and they're just so abundant. But um, I just wanted to touch on the two things that you're about to do today. The, the the coziest season, not really kicking off a traditional start for you, some might say. Well, it's hard to say. I don't know what they'll do for <laughs> the cozy season. I imagine a couple of uh, garlands from Party City sort of stapled over the, the doorpost. The sure, rental. yeah. Visible, visible uh, packing tape holding them up. Uh, you're, I'm, you're... As, I'm assuming Mariah Carey as I walk through the doors. I don't know. We'll see. Mike is going to Golden Corral I'm today. I'm going to Golden Corral. <laughs> to eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and shoot a little thing for, uh, for those of us who follow on uh, the Rift Tracks. This is a Rift Tracks assignment. So, so the, last, uh, the last Christmas Cozy we read was about the woman who was always feeding her leftover pies to that dog. Remember? Christmas yeah. River. Oh, yes, yeah. And, and we yeah. looked it up and it was like, oh, don't do that. That would not be a bad reaction for the dog. So I just that's, that's in my mind as you're about to embark upon this buffet feast at Golden Corral. <laughs> There's a little email thread about, you know, here's the logistics. And then I just happened to... I wanted to just post a picture of the food that we were about to eat. And so I started the search, Golden Corral <laughs> food, and the drop down said, Golden Corral food poisoning. Golden Corral <laughs> food poisoning remedies. Golden Corral. Uh, there were a few others mixed in, like menu and stuff, but it was mostly about food poisoning. I bet it is a place where you go and look at their you know, community reviews on Google, and then the, the pictures people have posted of their experience at Golden Corral are probably uh, just... Not doing it justice, I'm guessing. It's not like it's, a... It's just a buffet. I imagine it's not going... I mean, come on. It's a working... It's up and running. They, yes. they must <laughs> test their stuff for... I don't it's know. It's we'll been built up in your mind. Yeah, you know, of course. So. Yeah. So I got that going. So that's today, uh, a little later today. Very exciting. But before that, we have to pick a book. Um, and we have a ton of options here. Because when you put cozy Christmas mystery into here, you're just flooded with pages and pages of these titles and um i think we're just going to sort of talk this out in real time yeah well let's do it great uh there are no particular order other than just sort of discovering them and the first one that i jotted down was can it's going to be man these titles yeah candy canine christmas caper and the bow wow bakery a doggy bakery cozy mystery <laughs> um, so that is a you, you look at these and you're like okay is this like an established author is this a new series you start to size up the ratings and the cover art this has pretty pretty average clip arty cover art and only 83 ratings so I think it's a, a uh, up and coming author and it's about a uh, someone who I think owns a bakery for dogs um, and their wiener dog gets dog napped and that's the mystery they have to solve I <laughs> I, I was thrown right away by th these titles, by the way. We have to, I mean, I think I've said it before. At Hallmark, you know, they have a board and they just have the titles up. Yes. I'm assuming. And then the producers come around 
and the producers like bid on, oh, I want to do, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. The the producer who works in Toronto is like, I'll take those first four. Like, no, yeah. you got to get in the bidding war for uh, a can- night to remember K N I G H T. Like, yes, it's Christmas, comma Eve. You don't get that one. That one's <laughs> that's a high bidder. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what these are like but what threw me off is it's christmas and then mine went to the second line and it said the i said read it as the bow oh wow and then got to the second line christmas bow <laughs> oh bow wow okay so i thought that was cl- maybe that's a double entendre i don't know uh, i you know you can not give these people too much credit but i i, I feel like what you said about the board at hallmark too is the same for these um Plots too, because so this one, just like the last one we read, Christmas Forever, is a bakery, but and some of them have you know sentient animals that they you know help them solve the mystery. Yeah. This one is a bakery for dogs, so it's integrated those into the um, in, in, the two have combined there. So they bake the dogs right into the cake, as they say. <laughs> uh, the second one is get ready. I got to take a deep breath as well. Uh, a killer Christmas affair: colon a cozy mystery. Close parentheses, uh, uh, open parentheses, Sunflower Farms, Cozy Mystery Clothes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, the uh, very, very intriguing description of it, which I think you were just, uh, you're just summing these, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Santa murdered, St. <laughs> Bernoodle dog assists in solving, and it was fairly recent. So those are all... Those are big yeah. pluses in my this mind. Is a, it's the first book in the Sunflower Farms Cozy Mystery series. And the author, uh, you know, some of them just, if the cover is an indication of the quality, uh, <laughs> this one uh, needs to put in some more work, I think. Um, it's just, it, it, it Sussy Jordan d- didn't really go the extra mile on the cover. So to me, that's a plus. That's you a want, plus. You don't, you don't want these slick, uh, cozy mysteries. You want the, uh, <laughs> the undiscovered, the raw gems, I think. Uh, mm. After that, we have uh, A Christmas to Dismember, Ugh. Cozy Mystery, Country Cottage Cozy Mysteries. And this, I mean, speaking of like the, the top dog, this is one uh, Addison Moore, who is billed as a New York Times bestselling author. And then uh, in, it's like a collaboration with Bellamy Bloom. <laughs> I assume a real name of a, uh, you know, uh, 52 year old man, uh, former attorney. And uh, it's very funny on this one because it says a Christmas to dismember. So you imagine there is some sort of murder happening and it's just like the most adorable golden retriever puppy popping out of a box, like smiling at the camera. <laughs> and uh, and sitting bunnies. in front of what looks like uh, the set for a pretty expensive production of A Christmas Carol when he meets the ghost of Christmas uh, present. Yes. You know, sitting on with trees and presents and candles and Scrooge, come in! A Christmas to dismember! <laughs> yes. Fezziwig was found torn limb from limb, Scrooge. It's all, oh, it's, there's oh, blood everywhere. It's really, oh. So that's Tiny exciting. Tim is being drawn and quartered. <laughs> Good! God bless us, everyone! Uh, so that one's exciting, um, but you know, p- potentially a little too slick. Yeah, that that puppy turns me off. Just, <laughs> just putting that there. Just, just it looks buy like, it, you idiot. It's a yes, puppy. right. Especially compared to the other two in the next one, which has a very amateurish um, cover. Okay, uh, this one a little less uh, words to go through, but still, thank God. Parentheses, rough and crumble, raised and glazed, cozy mysteries. <laughs> so this is about a Cr- murder uh, that takes place outside of a donut shop. And there appeared to be, uh, this is book three of 39 in the Raised and Glazed Cozy Mystery <laughs> series. So that's a, <laughs> that's probably, that and the cover combined are probably a good indication of what you're in for quality-wise. It does, however, have uh, over 500 ratings on uh, on. Uh, <laughs> Just on assume Amazon. that for all of these. We'll point it out when, they're, when they don't have like 500 4.6 star ratings. Yes. Because that just seems to be b- baked in. But aren't um, like sort of... Uh, stylized storefronts are a cliche of the cozy mystery uh, cover genre, right? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, the next one is first aid and figgy pudding, a witch cozy mystery, midlife medicine Christmas special. So a lot to pick up on there. I don't know what, what? midlife medicine comes in, but this is a, a genre that I'm intrigued by. Is the paranormal cozy yeah. mystery here? 
because that seems to be, you know, uh, I guess the Twilight influence is pretty much the, responsible for all of that. But uh, it says it's a combination of midlife self-discovery, magic, and murder. Um, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, int I'm interested in how, like, the witch community integrates Christmas into their, you know, cosmology type of thing. Right, um, right. So, so that's, uh, uh, there's, we have another one in the witch uh, genre that I'm intrigued by as well. There's uh, just like adding the midlife thing, just like, look, we all know what's going on here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're not fooling anyone. Which, uh, witches can be sassy seniors too. Yes. We will all wear purple. Uh, <laughs> Dog on Christmas, colon, a poly parrot pet sitter Cozy murder mystery. <laughs> just that's just the word cloud. That's like one of those uh, you know Chinese uh, Amazon things. Like flashlight yes, yes. with happy battery will take you to new place with replacement Best. free Yashimo brand six in package. Please buy. <laughs> wow, you bought that yesterday, <laughs> didn't you? That rolled off yes. your tongue. Uh, yeah, trying to get all the SEO keywords into the title there yes. is the, uh, what they're trying to do there. Yeah. This one is uh, the, the last one, the, the witch one, had a pretty well done cover. Um, and then uh, this one, uh, a little more amateurish and uh, one of three books in the Polly Parrot Pet Sitter Cozy Murder Mysteries. It's, uh, I, this, this was a, uh, one where I, I copied some of the uh, description into the um, document here because it was pretty yeah. good. Polly Parrot is juggling the care of her wheelchair-bound mother, her pet-sitting business, and the sale of the family home. On top of that, she finds herself to, having to deal with an arrogant but really sexy realtor. And Christmas is coming! And then she finds herself in the middle of a murder investigation and must find the real killer before an innocent homeless man and his dog are wrongly convicted. So that's uh, the stakes are high there. So Polly Parrot is the human. And she's yes. a pet-sitter. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, the old joke. Why? Like, how? How crazy that her name was that, and then she ended up being a pet sitter. A pet sitter. Huh? So how about that? Um, uh, but sh so the sexy realtor is who is the sexy guy at Christmasville? Uh, Christmas. What is it? It was Christmas. the guy who had you know she had kissed at the lake in high school, and he came back, and he was sort of like the uh, no. But who was the, the lumberjack? The, who was the guy who was it a realtor or something? No, who? Oh, oh, Doctor John, right? Doctor, Doctor the, the podiatrist, Dr. John, right? Podiatrist. The, uh, <laughs> okay. Yes, the uh, he was always doing um, freelance podiatrist work or pro bono. Yes. All right, next one is yours. You you got to take a deep, long okay. take deep lung of air and have yourself a deadly little Christmas, a year round Christmas mystery. Don't know what that means, but I think well, it's one I'll of those... I'll tell you, because it's the okay. beginning of December in Rudolph, New York, America's <laughs> Christmas town. I think a lot of people will take issue with that. <laughs> yeah. And business is brisk at Mrs. Claus's Treasures, a gift and decor shop owned by Mary Wilkinson. Yes, it is spelled exactly as you imagine it. Yeah. <laughs> the local amateur cinematic so dramatic society is intensely preparing a special musical production of A Christmas Carol. But it's not a happy set as rivalries between cast and crew threaten the production. Tensions come to a head when a member of the group is found dead shortly after a shopping excursion to Mrs. Claus's treasures. So this is the classic, uh, the, the Mary is set up as a frame job here, it seems like. Yeah, I wonder, is this a, is this a, a bottle uh, issue or a bottle episode? Oh, wow. as they yeah. call it? Everyone the in the theater lights out, lights <laughs> yes, back exactly. up, someone's dead. Ooh, that'd be my good. pearls um i feel like in these uh cozy mysteries a murder is pretty necessary i think the stakes have to be there is a dead body there is a grieving family just to really contrast with the mrs claus's treasures and you know which dog will be crowned kiss christmas king type of thing like uh, just the, just like the uh, the quilters and the the teen drug opioid epi epidemic, like they really weren't set up to handle the more weighty issues. You know, a dog napping, sure, that can be cozy, but like, um, uh, there's no misunderstandings with the murder. <laughs> yeah, like a, a scene of uh, a little woman with the round glasses bent over with a shawl on, just like posing a dead body in a in a way to confuse <laughs> the police. <laughs> like, yeah. The, the, Mrs. Claus having to pull a drop piece out of her. Uh, <laughs> this is clearly her referencing the Zodiac Killer. Why did she have that information? <laughs> that was never released to the public. 
<laughs> so that's intriguing for wow. sure. Uh, the next one, a one hundred percent a uh, based on the title. Having a fudgy Christmas time, a candy coated mystery <laughs> by Nancy Coco, and it is a book that uh, if the cover is not uh, AI generated or just you know clip art sort of pasted together, I would be shocked. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I feel you like we're this... already having a fudgy Chris. Why do you need to candy coat it? How much do I need here? <laughs> and they're not simply oh, wow. having it. They're just having it. Um, I think wow. it's probably a... there's a, a puppy, a kitty, a Christmas tree and some candy. <laughs> and I think this woman, uh, she writes a uh, mystery set in a, we, I looked into it before because they all have fudge in the title. So it's like, it's, it's just funny. Uh, but this is on Mackinac Island, the uh, real oh, sure. Michigan location where there's no cars or anything like that. And I've been there and I'm pretty sure, you know, we went to a fudge shop there in real life. And this is the one that has only a solid four star rating Whoa. out of 78 ratings. So must be trash. <laughs> People are not having it now. This is this is where it went off the rails, I guess. But um, wow, yeah. So I think this one has a murder in it, so that's exciting. And um, I don't know. It says it's shorter, but I think they're all they all have to be the same length. Nancy yeah. writes <laughs> as Nancy Coco, Nancy J. Para, and Neil Hampton. What? what? <laughs> that's not very cozy. Wow, that's like uh, David Dakota directing uh, <laughs> movies under a woman's name. Interesting. Wow. Uh, um, this next one I can't pronounce, so I'm going to pass yeah. it over to you. I, this one is a, you know, so these, a lot of these are, uh, you know, a fudgy Christmas murder, a gingerbread, ginger dead house type of thing, integrating del delicious pastries and Christmas treats into the, um, you know, candy canes and murder. This one is the Nanaimo Bar Christmas Mystery. And the Nemo bars appear to be some sort of a layer-ish bar with chocolate on top. Lauren's mom might make these in like a colorful version. But it's just a very weird thing to stake your title on a cookie that I don't think either of us had ever heard of. That is real. I mean, it must be. Look, we're going to sell. Most of these copies are going to sell in Canada, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so that's what this promise is. If you're looking for an updated Miss Marple with a Canadian flair, you'll enjoy this novella. Oh, it later reveals that, so the update to Miss Marple is her name is Miss Maple. <laughs> so that's the update. What, how, many, how big is that net? How many people are out there being like, oh, man, I really wish they updated Miss Marple to be Canadian. Uh, Canadian. What? Nanaimo bars? Oh, uh, uh, macaroons? No, that is too mainstream. Maybe <laughs> something that no one will recognize. <laughs> then I'll read an updated Miss Marple. And I do like that this is specified in the description. It's a festive journey to the small Canadian town of Nanaimo. Um, so it must be where they originate from. And join Miss Maple as she uncovers a murderous mystery with no trace of gore, sex, or bad language in sight. <laughs> Which they have to specify because, you know, Christmas, Christmas murder in Christmas village was just rife with, you know, banging and, you know, swearing, like just, you know, unleash, cinnamon unleashes strings of profanity whenever she burns her hands, taking out a pie. It snowed. Beep, beep, <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> oh. uh, so that's this exciting. next one is, uh, <laughs> it's, it's troublesome to get out of the gates on, but I'll, I'll try it anyway. I think I know the pronunciation now. <laughs> Christmas Puds and Killers, Christian Cozen, Cozy Mystery, A Baker's Dozen Cozy Mystery Book 3. <laughs> what? So, I mean, unlike the last one that promised no, uh, no sex or anything, we got Christmas Puds right here in the title. <laughs> and it's a, uh, it looks like a little uh, create-your-own-bitmoji avatar of a, of a, a rosy-cheeked baker holding, I guess, which is... It's a pudding. Yeah, it's a it's a British pudding that she has here. It's, it's a pud lobby. Uh, yeah, and then the author Donna Doyle has a, a self generated avatar of a very grandmotherly looking woman. So, I think that the I, I'd be shocked if anything was as finely as the title "Christmas Puds and Killers." So, I, I'm not <laughs> oh, sure. that co that cover is shameful. That is obviously just the AI doing that. Yeah, yeah. That's well, like remember last YouTube. year we found the specific granny that was on the images of the yes. uh, that that uh brassy uh Louisiana woman. So is this set in is this British? Do they, where else do they call puddings puds? I think it must be British, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I think I, yeah, I think if you if you took th- three minutes, you'd find that chef image. I think. I, like, I, I think only I knew it. about uh, walnuts and port. I had no idea there was anything else that people did <laughs> yeah. in Britain. Oh, a fine day of uh, tracking the right worm, sir. Why well, retire to your office for poison and pud? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, go ahead. Next one. Uh, the next one is. Jeez. Uh, <sighs> Bewitch you a merry Christmas. <laughs> A cozy, cat-filled, magical mystery, parentheses, Brimstone Bay, book three. So, again, you know, the woman who said there's no cursing or sex, I'll assume that these are all going to be cat-filled unless you tell me otherwise, you know? Like, come on. (laughs) But this uh, description is, life was finally starting to feel normal for River Holloway. She had just been promoted to head journalist at the Brimstone Press and was looking forward to having a quiet holiday at home with her housemates and new official boyfriend, Jordan. That is, on two mysterious ghosts randomly appear in her bedroom on Christmas Eve morning. And the only thing she, they remember is that River is meant to be the next victim. So there's multiple killers, I guess, um, in this uh, paranormal Christmas witch-based um, uh, tale. And it has a, yeah, a woman in a witch hat uh, on the cover. Does she mean that until two mysterious ghosts randomly appear in her bedroom? I don't think she knows what the word randomly means. <laughs> yes, they have a specific message for her. They have a specific message. This is so <laughs> random, Cinnamon. Uh, oh, my mom's being so random. Uh, and, and this one is like, I think almost every book in here, except the ones that came out last, you know, last week, a USA Today bestselling author. So USA Today must have some sort of, you know, chart for, uh, I guess every genre of Amazon author, because every single cozy mystery author is, has cracked that chart. Uh, so here's another question. What do you do when like, you can't, uh, copyright a title, right? Yeah. But obviously, these there's so many thousands of them and so many thousands of, of uh, Hallmark movies and everything. There has to be, like, severe oh, crossover. Like, right. Bewitch You a Merry Christmas. There's got to be, like, seven of those. Before uh, I'm this. looking. I don't see them. But, like, you know, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I guess I, I, you just ignore it because it's like it doesn't matter because you can't copyright it. Yeah, I guess that's a parody of a song. And, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure. But... <laughs> we will we'll make sure to link to the right one so that you don't actually buy like the other canine candy canine Christmas caper in the Bow Wow Bakery because there's probably a dozen of those as well. Uh, this next one, um, I will uh, I'll read the title and then we will have to uh, do rock paper scissors to see who gets to pronounce the name of the town at which this <laughs> takes place because <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, this is a wee Christmas homicide, a Liz McKinnon mystery book three. <laughs> Uh, so go ahead and say the name of the town. I, so I read it this morning. So I, I, if I had not uh, had a chance to, I think I would have not been prepared. But it's, tis the season to be jolly, but in Moose Took a Look, Maine, Christmas cheer is in short to spy. That's uh, due to a snowless winter. So it's like the moose took a look at the other moose type of thing. Right. Um, and it's a, it's a, this one is, uh, you know, it, it, it is, uh, it has its own gimmick going forward in which it's a Scottish cozy Christmas mystery. So I'm not sure how puds factor into that, but like on the cover of it, like all the Christmas animals and stuff are in kilts and tartans and stuff like that. And, uh, oh, so yeah. So, uh, the, I'm assuming the audio book would be read by, um, uh, what's the name? Um, uh, the groundskeeper Willie. Yes. Uh, Lissa's brainstorm focuses on tiny teddies, the hot new toy of the season. Every store across the country is out of stock, except a few wee establishments in good old Moose took a look. <laughs> and then something amiss. Where's the murder? There's got to be a murder. Yeah, the first sign of something amiss occurs when the last tiny teddy is summarily executed. Oh, shot, shot through, through the, the heart. <laughs> the display window of greedy toy store owner Gavin Thorne. So it's got a little uh, cozy jingle all the way action going, it sounds like. Yeah. So wow. that's exciting. <laughs> Jingle All the Way had, um, as I recall, had like threats of like terrorism and everything in it. Wasn't there like, I'll set off this bomb if you don't give me the toy and stuff like that? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. If you go back and look at it, there's a lot of violence in that one. <laughs> uh, well, that's the list of, mo- I don't even know how many were on there. Probably 12, uh, 12 cozies of Christmas. Um, what What stands out to you? All right. Well, I'm going to go back. It's... 
It was just chronological. It just happened to be the one that I liked. Let me get to page one. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing it on pages. Um, I think uh, Santa being murdered is pretty good. Oh, wow. I, I don't know. It's just a killer Christmas affair, a cozy mystery, a sunflower farm's cozy mystery. Okay, by Sussy Jordan. Yeah, St. Burn Noodle Dog. A new one to me, yep. That's a breed, I guess. The, the Adding the oodle to the ends of dogs is a very hot right now, right? Yeah. I think so. Um, anyway, that Santa being murdered stands out to me as, <laughs> as pretty pretty good. Okay. I mean, I you know, I don't see what could what could possibly go wrong. It's a new author, it appears. It's book one of one in the series, so it's uh, you know, taking it uh off you know, kicking off the series. It appears uh something else that the author has written is Mom's Word Search Puzzles, hundred and twenty themed puzzles, large font, great gift for moms. So uh <laughs> might be her branching out into uh <laughs> cozy mysteries, her she looks like a kindly woman uh, in this, yeah, uh, appears to have a school portrait, maybe. But um, I mean, I'll miss the, like in the Cozy Mysteries, we were deep in the series. So I'll miss the vast lists of people who have appeared in the previous books showing up <laughs> with no explanation because it's only the first book. But maybe she'll come out hot out of the gate and just list people, you know, that yeah. we haven't seen and won't appear in the book. I, I can hope for that. <laughs> um i it sounds good to me i don't i really don't see how you can go wrong so um i mean like let's do it let's uh All give right. this uh give sussy jordan a nice little christmas boost here let me go back to her okay i'm going back to the document i want to click on it and just see <laughs> if it has like if the page numbers it's like 1378 then we might have to reconsider uh and we got to make sure that there's a kindle version too i believe there is but uh, that will make it a lot harder to read if there wasn't. Yeah, it is a. Uh, it's on Kindle Unlimited and costs uh, two ninety nine. So you can get a paperback and Kindle. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. And deep, wow, that cover. Oof, that's not good. <laughs> but uh, she was page, oh, 90 pages. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll okay. Uh, I mean, who knows? That could be a uh, bang it out in an hour, but um... we don't. Know. We don't know what <laughs> ninety means. <laughs> All right, fine. That's uh, we, right. we're going to read a killer Christmas affair, a cozy mystery, a sunflower farms cozy mystery, book one of one, a sunflower farms cozy mystery by Sussy Jordan, and it has a uh, out of focus dog on the cover. Th <laughs> three different fonts I used on the cover as well. <laughs> All right, I'm excited. Very exciting. Sunflower Hacienda is in there. And then suddenly Santa is found dead. <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> wow. The little uh, touch of Ellis. Yes. All Great. right. Well, let's do it. Thanks, everybody. So long.